Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to GMAT 2019. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We began our story yesterday. Yesterday was our, was our first day. Today is our lesson number two. Day two, we are on page number 148, and we're going to pick up from problem number 12, the very first problem that you see on page number 148. Make sure the book is in front of you, and make sure that you read the problem to yourself from the book, because what I put on the blackboard is actually a very abridged version. Do you understand? I am too lazy to put down the whole thing. Number 12. In number 12, we are given, this is what, I, what we are given, I'm going to give you here, x, 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 y, y, v, x, 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 y, y, v, v, x, x, y, w, w. I hope I did not make a boo-boo. And the ratio is very simple. The ratio is, uh, uh, rather, the question is very simple. The question is, what is the ratio, what is the ratio of x or y, x or y to v or w. Let's find out, shall we? I'm going to throw away this marker because it's dying and I keep I keep picking it up. So now it's gone. I will never have to touch it again. So let's find out, shall we? The ratio of x or y to v or w. v or w. Let's find out how many x's there are. Let's find out how many x's there are, shall we? We have one, two, three, four, and five x's. So we have five x's. Let's find out how many y there are. I see one y, two y, three y's, I see three y's. Did I miss anything? Hopefully not. How many v's do we have? We have one and two. And finally w's, I see two of them, one and two. And there you go. That's all it is. 8 to 4. The ratio is 8 to 4 or if you like 2 to 1. The ratio is 2 to 1. That was number 12. 2 to 1 would be answer choice E. Make sure you pay attention and pick 2 to 1 and not 1 to 2. After having done all the work you don't want to end up being careless at the very end because it happens to best of us. Let's do the next one. Number 13. In number 13, we have one third plus one half minus one minus five six. And then we have plus one fifth plus one fourth minus nine twentieth. Question is how much is this quantity? Question is how much this is this quantity? What we need to understand here is that these questions are not this particular question, all the questions, the entire exam, the math question I'm talking about. It's not there to see how well you, how good you are, how well you can add fractions or how good you are at adding fractions or how quick you are in adding numbers. That's not the point. They're not trying to see how big of a freak you are. They just want to see how well you can think. Do you have strategies? Do you have some, do you have some method? Or is it, is it sheer madness? Madness is fine and dandy as long as there is a method to the madness. Do you understand? Are you able to see, are you able to see that if you look at these three quantities, we have a 3, a 2, and a C, a 6 rather, are you able to see that 6 is a multiple of both 2 and 3? Similarly, these three are different creatures. Here we have a 5 and a 4 and a 20, and again, 5 and 4 are not multiples, rather, that's not what I meant to say, factors. 5 is a factor of 20, 4 is a factor of 20. These are two different kind of creatures. It is best, it is wise to treat them separately. Don't do them together. If you do them together, you'll be there forever. Let's do them, to, let's do them separately. So we have one third, one third plus one half minus five six. We need to find a common denominator, don't we? Common denominator would be six. That was the whole point because six is the multiple of both two and three. How do we make this into a denominator of six? We have a denominator of three. It's very simple. Take that first fraction and multiply top and bottom by two. So now we have a denominator of six here. How do we make this into six? I multiply top and bottom by three. I feel that I'm explaining too much. We don't want to be here for an hour. So that's it. Now all of these three quantities have a denominator of 6. They have a common denominator of 6. Makes it life easy. So on the top we have 2 times 1 which is 2. 
3 times 1 is 5, so we have 2 plus 5 minus 5, it's a big fat 0. Let's work on that part. So, so we have 1 fifth, then plus 1 fourth, minus 9 twenty. 9 twentieth. Common denominator would be 20 because 20 is a multiple of both 4 and 5. How do we make this into a denominator of 20? Very simple. I multiply top and bottom by 4. Similarly, multiply this guy by 5 over 5. Again, we have 4 times 1, which is 4, 5 times 1, which is 5, and then minus 9. What do you suppose we're going to get? 5 plus, we're going to get a big fat 0. I don't have my calculator handy, so I'm going to leave it up to you as to how much is big fat 0 plus big fat 0. Do you understand? Number 14. Number 14, we are told, Number 14, we are told that point 0 02 lies on line 2x plus 3k, 2x plus ky rather, and that equals to 4, we are told. The question simply is how much is the value of k? We see k, yeah? how much is it? But we are told that this point lies on that line. So if that particular point lies on that line 2x plus ky, equals 4, this is the equation of the line and that point lies on it which means the coordinates of this point, the coordinates of this point must satisfy this equation. In other words, if you substitute the x coordinate here which is 0 plus the y coordinate which is 2, which is 2, y coordinate is 2, it must satisfy the given equation in other, in other which is same as saying this quantity must equal 4. That's all. 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 0 is 0, so we get 2k equal to 4 and k equals to 2. Do you understand? Next time, in the future, I'm not going to do this damn silly step in the middle here because that's too babyish. You're able to see that 2k equals 4, so that thing is 0. So if you start doing every excruciating baby, uh, baby steps, it gets to be a real pain in the derriere. And we do not wish that to be. No, sir. Number 15. We have bouquets. We have bouquets. I want to make sure that I spell the word bouquet properly. We have bouquets that are that are to have red and white tulips. Red and white tulips. In the same ratio. In the same ratio, which is very important. This particular shop, this particular flower shop sells these bouquets and the ratio of red tulip to white tulip in every single bouquet that they sell is always the same. It cannot change. Here's what we have. We are told that we happen to have, we happen to have 15 white, 15 white tulips and 85 red tulips. <coughs> the question is, how many bouquets can we sell? How many bouquets can we sell based on the inventory that we have? With the constraint that they have to be in the same ratio. What do we do here? Here's what we need to do. We know we have 85 red bouquets. If you divide 85 by 15, okay, stay with me. 85 divided by 15. 85 would you agree that 85 is the same as 15 plus 10? Of course you, you would agree. Why wouldn't you agree? You're not insane. Over 15. And 75 is made up of how many 15s? We know 15 times 10 is 150 and half of 150 is 75. So if 150 is made up of 10 15s, then it stands to reason that 75 must be made up of 5 15s. So 75 over 15 is 5 and 10 over 15 is 2 thirds. Very difficult to sell five and two-third bouquets. Very difficult to sell two-third of a bouquet. Which means they're only going to sell five. Five is the most that they can sell. Five is the most they can sell because they don't have enough of the enough of the red ones to finish the job. If you had 90 of them, if you had five more red tulip, we would have we could have sold one more, we could have made one more bouquet, but we cannot. We only have 85 of red ones. Number 16. 
number 16. Number 16 says we simply have to find the average average of these numbers 74, 69, 64, 79, 64, 84, and 77. The question simply is what is the average of these numbers? Number 16, how do they phrase it? I'm sure they have a whole story to go with it. Over the past seven weeks, the Smith family had a weekly grocery bills of these amount of dollars. The question is, what is Smith's average grocery bill over that seven week period? It's just the average. So let's, let's see what we can do, shall we? Of course we can do it, we can add them all up and divide by seven, the classical way. You can do that and if that's what you want, you can do that. I'm just, I'm just gonna pretend that the average is 70. It looks like around 70. Let's just pretend it's 70. So that first particular week, they spend four dollars more than the average uh, that we're pretending. We're pretending, we're pretend, let's pretend, that's why I said, let's pretend, it's just a pretend. Let's pretend that the average, that the average is 70. We are just pretending, we do not know. So if you were to pretend that the average was 70, that first week they spent four dollars more than their average grocery uh, budget, if you like. The next week they spend one dollar less. The following week they spend six dollars less than the average weekly, not average rather, I didn't mean to say average. They spend six dollars less than what their weekly grocery budget is, if you want to think it that way. The following year they spend nine dollar more than their weekly grocery budget. Then the six dollar less, then fourteen dollars more than they should have, and then seven dollars more. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. I'm going to change the color. I'm going to change the color because we have the flair for the dramatics. So what do I see? Oh, we see here a positive seven. I see a positive seven and I see a negative six and a negative one. You see that? Which means these three play no role. They play no role in affecting the average of 70 because these three will have the average of 70. So these three, these three figures neither raise the average from 70 nor do they decrease the average from the 70. The average of these three is 70. They play no role. What else can we do? Well, I see, I see positive 6 and a negative 2. A negative 6, well, let's, let's take care of this one. Negative 6 and a positive 2. Let's cross it out and subtract 6 from it. It gives us positive 8. We're almost done. Let's finish it up. Okay, stay with me in this story. 8 plus 8 would have been 16. So 8 plus 9 is 17. 17 plus 17 plus 4. 17 plus 4 is only 20. 17 plus 4 is only 20. We subtract a 6 here. We subtract 6 from here. That's 8. 6, 6, negative 1, positive 4. One more time. I'm going to start from here. 4 plus 9 is 13. 13 plus 8. Oh, there you go. Now this time I get the right answer. 4 plus 9 is, thir four plus nine is 13 and 13 plus 10 would have been 23. Therefore, 13 plus 8 is 21. 13 plus 1 is 21. Let's go the other way. I want to find out what mistake I made. 8 plus 8 is 16. So it's 17 plus, 17 plus 24 is, 20, is 21. So we have leftover of 21. We pretended that the average was 71, uh, 7. But if we pretend that the average is 7, we have a leftover of $21, and those $21 have to be divided equally in among those seven weeks. We have $21 extra that has to be divided equally among seven weeks. So it's 21 divided by uh, 7 is 3. We pretended the average was 7, not 70. We pretended the average was 70. It turns out the average is not 70. Actual average, actual average actually is. Actual average turns out to be. Actual average turns out to be 70 and 21 seventh. 70 and 21 70 is 73. Let's do the next one, shall we? Number 17. Number 17. It says 125% of 5 is how much? 125% of 5. But we know we know that the 100% of 5 is just 5. 100% of 5 is just 5. But we don't want 100%, we want 125%. So on the 25%, on the 25% of 5 would simply be a fifth of a 5, or rather a quarter of a 5. A quarter of something, a quarter represents 25%, doesn't it? So it's a quarter of a 5. It's a quarter of a 5. One more time. We want to find 125% 
125% between 100% is 5, another 25% would be 5 quarters. Or if you didn't want to make a fuss about it like this, we could have, we could have, shared, we could have set it up a little bit differently. 125% is the same as 100% plus 25%. 100% is 5, and 25% is 1 quarter, isn't it? 1 quarter of 5, 1 quarter of 5 is simply 5 quarters. So 125% would be 5 and 5 quarters. Well, 5 and 5 quarters is simply 6 and a quarter. 5 and qu 5 quarter is simply 6 and a quarter. This is number 18. Number 18. In number 18, we are, we are supposed to find we're supposed to find the median of 34, 29, 27, 46, 18, 25, 12, 35, and 16. Since we are asked to find the median, since we are asked to find the median of these seven of these readings, we have to find out how many readings do we have. If we have even number of observations, then we'll have the median will simply be the average of the middle two. If we have odd number of observations, then the median will simply be the middle one. So let's, let's count very quickly, shall we? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What do you know? There are nine of them. So four on this side, four on that side. The fifth one in the middle is the median. So let's arrange them in order. Let's arrange them in order. So I see the 16th, 16 is the smallest one. Then we have 18 ISO. There we go. We have 18. Any other one? Oh, I left out 12. I left out 12. So let's put a 12 here. 12, 12, 16, 18, 25, 25. And the next one is going to be 27. There you go. 27 is the median. We don't have to do any more work. Had it been a real exam, you can stop right there. It doesn't matter what the next four are. We just want to look at the fifth one. Fifth, ob fifth observation, when the observations are arranged either in ascending order or descending order. Here we arrange them in ascending order, in, in the increasing order. It doesn't matter whether we arrange them in ascending order, as I said, or descending order. We just want the fifth observation, because when you have the fifth observation, you're going to have four on the left of it and four on the right of it. But if you want to finish it up, you can finish it up. It's not a big deal. Do you understand? It's not a big deal. The next one is going to be, oh, we don't have to, so I'm not going to. Number 19. Number 19, we are told that uh, this person, I forget the name of the person, I wrote just, just wrote down R, Rebecca. Oh, I like that. Why not? Rebecca, we are told, is 34 year old. I have always been more keen on, on, on Rebecca than Robert, so I like it. Rebecca is 34 year old, and we are told that her daughter is 8 year old. Today, this is for today, right now as we speak. The question is, how many years, how many years before Rebecca is twice as old as her daughter? How many years will pass before she is twice as old as her daughter? And the answer choices are 10, 14, 18, 22, and 26. A, B, C, D, E. I'm writing down the answer choices for a reason. So listen carefully. When the answer choices have to happen to be numeric, like they are here, we have two choices. We can either solve it in a classical way, in a very classical, very orthodox way, in a very conventional way, by using algebra. In other words, do it algebraically, which you can do if you wanted to, or you can simply take one of the answer choices and put it back in there and see if it works, which is called the back solving technique, which is called back solve. And when we're, when we're, doing, when we're back solving, it's always a good idea to start from the middle, a happy medium. Start from the middle and decide which way to go up or down based on what, what happens. So let's start from the middle and what happens. Let's see what happens. And if it turns out that the middle one actually works, then that's the answer. So let's begin, shall we? So here's the situation that is now, and here's the situation 18 years from now. 18 years from now. That's what 18 represents here. Question is, how many years before Rebecca is twice as old as her daughter? How many years 
we are pretending that the answer is 18. We're just pretending, we do not know. If it doesn't work, then we're going to have to try one of the other answer choices, and we're going to have to make a decision as to which, which directions to move, up or down, depending on what happens. So let's try it. Here is Rebecca, and here is the daughter. These are the current ages, 34 and 8. So how old will Rebecca be 18 years from now? Well, 18 years from now, she'll be 34 plus 18. How old her daughter going to be 18 years from now if her daughter is only 8 years old today? Well, her daughter is going to be 8 plus 18. 18 years from now, her daughter is going to be 8 plus 18. 8 plus 18 is 8 plus 8 is 16. So it's 6 carry 1, that's 26. And here, 4 plus 8 is 12, 2 carry 1, we get a 52. We get a 52. And what do you know? It turns out that 52 is indeed twice 26. 52 in, is, is in this twice 26. In other words, 18 years from her, 18 years from now, her daughter, who is only a child of 8 years old today, will be, an, will be a grown lady of 26 years old, at which point Rebecca will be in her 50s. At that point, she'll be exactly 52 years old, hence making her twice as old as her daughter, 18 years from now. We're done. We don't have to do it algebraically. That's the answer. Now, if you wanted to, for learning purposes only, not for the real exam. The real exam, we are done. The answer is C. We try the back solving, it works out beautifully. Let's learn how to do it algebraically. Let's, let's learn how to, learn how to do it algebraically. You understand? And when we are doing something algebraically, in the algebraic method, the most important ingredient is to define your unknown. So that's the important part. So let's define our unknown. This is the algebraic solution. Algebraic solution. Let, let Rebecca be, let Rebecca be twice as old as her daughter. Let Rebecca be twice as old as her daughter in X years time, in X years time. That is our unknown. Let her be twice as old as her daughter and in X years time. Well, in X years time, in X years, in X years, how old would Rebecca be? But she's 34 today. She's 34 today. X years from now, she'll be 34 plus X. How old is her, how old is her daughter? Her daughter is 8 years old. How old is she going to be? How old is her daughter going to be? X years from now. Well, if she's 8 years old today, X years from now, she'll be 8 plus X. At which point we are told, at which point we are told that this quantity, Rebecca's age, is two times her daughter's age. Rebecca's age at that point is two times her daughter's age. Let's solve it on the top. So we have 34, 34 plus x. Now what I wrote down here is actually nonsense. You understand? This is sheer nonsense. Why is this sheer nonsense? Because you see, algebra is a language. I don't want to make it too much fuss about it, but this is this is this is not correct. Because here R and D we were using in the in our work. What did R and D represent in our work? R and D in our work represented the name, the people, not their ages. These are not quantities, these are not numerical values. In algebra, in algebra, letters represent numerical value. They do not represent people's name. You understand? We did not define, we did not define R to be Rebecca's age, nor did we define D. Is Rebecca's age. Never, nowhere in our problem. So let's continue. So we have two times, let's open the parentheses, we get 16 plus 2x. Here we have 34 plus x. Let's bring the x to the other side, subtract x from both sides. Positive x and negative x is going to drop out, that was the whole point. And 2x minus x is going to give us x. Let's bring 16 to the other side, let's subtract 16 from both sides. So now we have, so now we have positive 16 here and a negative 16 here. They're going to drop out, and here we have positive 34 and negative 16. 32, 32 minus 16 would have been exactly 13, so it's going to be 18. There we go. X equals 18. Let's not put the x a mile away. X equals 18, which is exactly what we found. The non-traditional method when we cheated, we simply took one of the answer choices, and we simply put it back in the problem and see if it works. And if it works, and if, if it works, 
It's like a jigsaw puzzle. If it works and if all the pieces fit properly, nicely, then that's the answer. I'll see you tomorrow on day number three, where we'll pick up, where we'll pick up from the next page, from problem number 20. Alright? Bye now.